If you're tired of feeling stuck, whether it's with your weight, your health, or just a constant battle with food, you've probably heard all the buzz about the GLP-1s, the semaglutide, the terzepatide, and you've probably wondered if it would work for you. But maybe you've seen all the scary articles and headlines and videos about it that highlight side effects or unknowns. But I'm a primary care doctor and I've treated literally hundreds of people with semaglutide and terzepatide. And I have stories that would blow you away. Like Anita, who weighed 300 pounds when I met her and now has lost 150 pounds. Maria on terzepatide appetite lost 80 pounds and says that she no longer constantly obsesses about food. Or Wayne, who started semaglutide when he had an A1C of 13.8% and I just diagnosed him with diabetes. Fast forward six months later and his A1C is down to 5.8%. I can go on and on and on with life-changing stories like that. And so when you see clickbaity articles or videos on the 10 side effects of semaglutide that you didn't know about, or we don't know the long-term effects of these medications yet, you know, I agree there are risks to these medications, but there's to every medication. But the last thing I want is for you to be fooled. You deserve to know the real world pros and cons if you're thinking about taking one of these medications and from someone who's witnessed a lot of good come out of them and yeah, some bad too. Just don't believe every scare tactic that you see. Listen, if you're so miserable or just dealing with being unhealthy because of a weight problem or some other problem that these GLPs can help with, there are far too many possible pros of not having to deal with those things anymore than the unknown side effects that five years from now we still haven't discovered. Honestly, the GLPs were made in the 1980s. It's been a long time and we've been prescribing them to people who are diabetic. And the reason it works for diabetes is because it can reverse insulin resistance. And after treating so many people with GLP-1s and studying insulin more and more, I'm convinced more than ever that insulin resistance is the root of almost every major health problem we have. And if that sounds like an exaggeration, it's not. Give me 10 seconds to explain why. Insulin is a critical signaling hormone that is supposed to tell the liver to stop making extra blood sugar when we've eaten. And if you chronically overeat or have any chronic inflammatory disease or issue, insulin doesn't work right. The signal stops working and your blood sugar stays elevated when it's not supposed to. Yet your brain and your body feel like it's not and you're stuck in this cycle of maybe not even eating that much, but you're still unable to lose weight. Sound familiar? And this just sets off a domino effect in the body. Inflammation and being overweight can lead to all kinds of health consequences. I don't even have to list them out for you. And please don't mistake me for fat shaming. I have no intention of telling you that you're not a beautiful person if you're overweight. That's not the purpose of this talk. It's just that when I see someone struggling with weight or fatigue or diabetes or pre-diabetes or even hormone issues, it's not just about the scale. It's about stopping the chain of problems that eventually lead to disease. That's my job. So if you need to reverse any of those problems, obesity or being overweight included, let's do the thing that I've seen work better than any other weight loss drug or program out there, period. You just need to have a conversation with your doctor and it needs to be personal and personalized because every one of you is different. I can't stress that enough. All right, let's get practical and wrap this up with who should and should not be taking the GLP-1s. Who are the GLP-1s for? GLP-1s are for you if you have meaningful weight to lose. You have health risks like pre-diabetes, diabetes, fatty liver, or maybe if you could lose some weight, you might not have high blood pressure or sleep apnea. If you have strong food noise or that constant thinking about food all the time, or maybe you're somebody who struggles with binge eating and dieting and therapy just aren't working enough. If you're somebody who's willing to start your weight loss journey with simple things like walking, lifting weights, eating more protein and less sugar, and let's not forget good sleep. Oh, and also a realistic plan for paying for it because insurance doesn't always cover it. And who shouldn't be taking the GLP ones? Skip or delay taking a GLP one if you have personal or family history of medullary thyroid carcinoma and no that's not just any thyroid cancer it's about one to two percent of all thyroid cancers it's kind of rare or if your family member has multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2 which is also very rare if you're pregnant you can't be on it if you're trying to get pregnant soon it might not be for you or if you're breastfeeding it's definitely not for you if you've had pancreatitis in the past talk to your doctor about that and if you have something called gastroparesis where your stomach doesn't really work that well or it's very slow or if you're somebody who struggles with nausea constipation or reflux those are the most common side effects of the GLP ones so you're going to want to think about that before diving in and heads up if you use medication for diabetes already if you start a GLP one you're basically adding on another medication and your blood sugar will lower if you're a woman and you decide to start taking terzepatide but you use birth control pills you're going to want a backup method of contraception for one week if you start it and anytime you increase the dose and that's because terzepatide slows the gut down so much that absorption of your birth control pills can be lowered. And also if you have gallstones or kidney issues, you're going to want to talk it out with your doc if you can start the GLP-1s. And that's it. 
But I will say a couple of things that I've seen people miss out on when they start semaglutide or tizepatide through like a med spa or somebody who doesn't do quite a thorough consultation. And that's always start at a very low dose and increase the dose very slowly. Most side effects happen when people increase the dose too high or too fast. Expect the first four to eight weeks on this medication to be a settling in phase, not your personal best weight loss month. I can't stress this enough, guys. I've seen people end up in the ER for increasing their dose too fast or not listening to my advice. If you're taking one of these medications and casually throwing up two or three times a day, not okay, guys. Tell your doctor about that. There's usually ways to get around that. And it's just as simple as that. If you've got weight to lose or some health risks, you're ready to change and you've got a safe plan and support, you can consider using a GLP-1. Now, if you're hoping for a quick fix and no habit changes, you might be disappointed. I've seen that too. And hey, I've seen the injections simply not work for everybody. I'd say about 80% of the people I've put on these medications have had a lot of success, but there are 10 to 20% of people that they just don't work for. Sometimes the side effects are just too much, but the GLPs aren't hype and it's okay to fear the unknown. But I think the track record of these medications is proving itself. It's about you, your health, and whether this tool makes sense in your story. So if you're considering it, have the conversation with your doctor. And if this video helped clear things up, I've done my job. If you liked it, hit the like button for me, subscribe to my channel. I'll keep making videos that you want to watch. Drop a comment if you have any questions about the GLP-1s. I'm Dr. Ashley Frazee. I run a direct primary care clinic in Mesa, Arizona. You guys have a good day.